and welcome back to another Thunderous Productions video. I'm the madman behind the mic, Jag Thunder, and this is Minecraft. And what's up guys, and welcome to a new series that I am starting. And this revolves around my DIB world that I've been working on for several years. And this particular series is going to be how to build an Air Force base or how to build an airfield to be specific. Now, you might not be building an Air Force base specifically, but you hopefully can use some of the things that I'm going to go over in this series or this Let's Build. Um, the way I am going to approach it, I'm using Anderson Air Force Base as a reference. Uh, reference only. I'm not going to be building this 1-1 one, one scale or full replica. I'm only going to be taking highlighted areas from this and applying it to my world. So hopefully you'll be able to do the same thing if you're building an airfield and you're using someplace else. Uh, usually the first thing that I do is I go on Google and I get just as many pictures as I can find of the certain build that I'm going after in this particular case, an airfield. Uh, Anderson Air Force Base I picked because it is very large. I have a lot of large aircraft that I have built on my channel, uh, C-17s, C-5s, uh, all that good stuff. And I wanted to make sure that uh, I built an airfield that was capable of handling that size airplanes. You're going to take the same, same information when you start your build take everything into consideration. Also the area on your map, if it's a flat world, obviously area is not going to be a problem. Uh, if it is on a custom map, depending on how much area that you've cleared away, uh, set aside for your airfield, you may have to scale some things down. Um, basically just cut everything in half. The view in Minecraft, uh, as far as we can render out, if you cut everything in half, especially the, the length of the airfields, um, everything should turn out just fine. I always leave the width though. The width <laughs> so uh, anyways is what I did first is uh, I, I've got Guam pulled up here and this is Anderson Air Force Base and in my world I've got two of the long runways and then the middle one going right here uh, and then I've got some other things kind of plastered in as far as hangar bays go uh, just because I run out of room but I want to get the overall general feel of Anderson Air Force Base or an Air Force Base in general uh, a lot of the uh, most common questions that will come up is, well, how long is the airfield? How wide should I make it? Um, what building should I put on it? Where should the hangar base go? Uh, so the second place that goes is Google Earth, right here. Uh, pull it up. It's got a really awesome tool right here called the, uh, the Ruler, and I think it's up in View and right somewhere is up in here you guys can probably find it quicker and I have right here tools ruler click it on and that will bring up this little guy right here this is very 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 helpful set it to meters because everything in Minecraft is meters your block is one meter square or three feet square uh, so this will make things a lot easier it will tell you exactly how long you should make it uh, so that's what I did I come here a long time ago uh, probably five or six, seven, eight months ago, and started getting a lot of these dimensions off of this airfield and putting it down on like a piece of paper or graph paper or even Photoshop or something along them lines. And uh, and then that gave me a rough idea. Then I went into MC Edit. I'm on PC, so it does make it a lot easier. And I started laying a lot of these things out in my custom world, trying to figure out how much room that I actually needed. Now, originally, uh, I, I did build the airfields pretty much 1-1 one, one scale. Uh, the only difference is, is I'm not going to be building all this stuff around it like I said before, but I did want the, uh, the length of the airfields. Uh, so anyways, again, we picked this airfield because it does handle the larger aircrafts, the B-52s, the C-17s, the C-5s, um, all the good, glorious, huge military uh, aircraft. So I wanted to make sure that it was plenty big enough. So the first thing I did was I zoom in and I'm like, well, how wide is this runway? So I click here and then I pull across and I click on it and it says 66 meters. Um, now you guys should know by now, for the most part, try to build on the odds. Build everything on the odds. That way you'll have a nice center line going down the middle. So you can either run this off to 65 meters or 67 meters, uh, whatever you prefer. Again, back here it's the same and I do believe oops I'm going the wrong way here let me zoom back out um, my mouse wheel mouse wheel <laughs> all right there we go I'm getting confused with Photoshop and some other programs that I use uh, I think the other runway is a little bit smaller so I clicked on here oops 
and across, and yes, this one is 59 meters. Uh, I made both my runways the same width, and when we jump in world, I'll give you the actual width on that. I haven't checked it in a long, long time, but I think I might have went with the 59, but I'm not 100% sure. So anyways, there's your width. Super, super easy. Well, how long should I make it? Again, this is going to depend on your world. Do you want a full 4,000 meter runway? Because that's exactly what this top runway is. It's exactly 4,000 meters long from tip to tip, 4,026 meters. Uh, so one of my runways is right around 4,000 meters. This bottom one, I believe, is like 37 or 38. And I keep forgetting to click clear on that. So yeah, 3,800 meters. Uh, again, that's 3,800 Minecraft blocks. That's a lot of block laying if you're on the console. Uh, if you're on the PC, you have a lot more options. Obviously, your World Wrapper, uh, MC Edit, um, something along them lines where you can smack all them blocks down in seconds and be done and get a lot of the major uh, stuff like that finished. And then you can get in and start building your, uh, your buildings and laying other things out. Uh, if you're on the console, that alone would probably take you a week to dig all that out and set all the blocks. I do not, I do not recommend it. Uh, again, for scaling purposes, I would probably cut that in half. I'd probably make it 1,500, 1,700 meters long. Um, the view, your view in uh, Minecraft, I think, is you know, pff, I don't know, 200 blocks maybe. It depends on your computer. Um, mine, I can render way the hell out. I can almost see from one airfield to the other, which is uh, over 400 blocks. Um, again, PC, it's quicker. I've got Optifine and things like that installed on my computer, which makes it a hell of a lot easier. Uh, so anyways, uh, scaling it down, people are like, well, is it, is it 1, 3 scale? Is it 3, 2 scale? Is it 5, 8 scale? What, what scale is it? It's whatever scale feels comfortable to you. It feels uh, whatever looks good in your world. With every build, you want to build a small section of it, um, a little piece of runway. Grab one of my tutorials. Figure out what planes are you going to use. Again, if you're applying this to a, um, a, a commercial airport, uh, grab your planes, build one, build a runway, see what it looks like. See what kind of space that that thing actually takes up. Don't nit for me, I don't nitpick the actual scale of the build to the, to the point where I lose sleep over it. Um, I get it as close as I can, and I may bump it up a few blocks. I may take it down a few blocks, depending on how much detail that I want in it. A lot of my planes are very slightly overscaled, anywhere between 4 and 7 meters. Um, I try not to go too much more than that um, because I want it to look in scale with the rest of my builds. Um, so my building style allows me to put these builds next to it and, and, and make them look like they're all to scale. So even if you cut your runways in half is where I'm going with this, and then put all your buildings around it, you're still going to look like you're to scale as long as you leave the width, because your your air you know your aircraft, obviously if you scale down the width of it, um, it's going to be way too wide. Um, so if you leave the width of your airfield, it's going to feel like hey man, that's the size it's supposed to be. Don't make a 300 meter long runway. Don't make a 600 meter run long runway. At least make it at least 1,200, 1,500. Get some decent length to it, guys. Um, always give yourself more room than you, uh, than you think you're going to need. Lay it out with some wool blocks um, and then and go from there and adjust it accordingly. The reason why I say that, um, I've seen some really nice airfields, some really nice airports. Uh, the, the biggest problem was that everything was shoehorned into a very, very small area. Uh, you're going to be building an airport for Christ's sake. Make yourself some room. Uh, clear a lot of things out. If it's on an existing world, you're going to probably have to do a lot of terraforming. Uh, if you're really heart set on building a, you know, a big airport that looks to scale and everything feels right, you may even have to start a new world. Um, suck it up and start over. <laughs> I've done it several times. Uh, it just depends on what your needs and your wants and your requirements out of this project is going to uh, is, is, is what you're looking for, looking to achieve from this project. Uh, so anyways, now that we got the major things, we got the length, we've got the width, we've kind of got the scaling down. Again, we can adjust that once we get in-game and we get building and things like that. Um, so those are the major things that you need. Uh, things around the the airport or the airfield. Is it military? You're going to have military housing. You're going to have military basing um, or uh, admin buildings. You're going to have uh, hangar bays. Um, all, all those types of things you're going to have around the, the military base. Uh, your re regional airports or commercial airports, you're going to have 
pretty much a lot of the same things. You're going to have hangar bays, places to work on the aircraft. Um, obviously, you're going to have terminals and things like that where people, because it's more public access, you're going to have a lot more um, things that are going to be public related. So this is where the split is going to happen. Uh, this is going to be a military air base. Uh, we may try to do a regional or an international I keep saying, you know, commercial or whatever, international airport later on down the road. But you should be able to take some of the things that we're doing with the military air, airfield and applying it to other types of airports and airfields. Uh, so, like I said, that's where the split is going to happen. All right, so reconcentrating on the military airfield, go back on Google, get some more pictures of the surrounding area. As much as you can find, even if they're small images, it still gives you in your mind what it looks like around the airfield, what kind of buildings they are, uh, what colors, um, different ideas for materials that you can use, uh, the parking lots. Again, we can uh, we can get that right here. We can scroll and we can figure out what buildings we're definitely going to be using. I'm going to be uh, concentrating probably probably on this main area right here. There's a big hangar bay here. There's a big drive-through hangar bay here for the B-52, and I'm pretty sure this is the main admin building. Um, there's a really sweet picture that I have with a, a bunch of different planes right here, and it's, they were having some kind of a commemoration or whatever. So this is a really good uh, recognizable area if somebody has been at Anderson Air Force Base. Um, and the military will look at my build and be like, oh, I recognize that. And and that's it. They don't have to go around and be like, well, that road's not right. Well, that road wasn't there. Um, you're just picking up some of the main features, and that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be picking up a lot of the main features. Uh, like I said, this building here, I've got a picture of it. I can find out approximately how long it is. It's approximately 153 meters long. Well, how wide is it? Again, click on this. It's approximately 25 meters wide. Now, again, that's all going to be subjectable to once I start building in game. This may end up being 33 meters wide. This may be 121 meters long. Again, I always try to work on the odds so that I have a nice uh, center line to work with. There's a nice grassed in area right here, uh, maybe a little seating area, and there's your parking lot area. Um, I wouldn't nitpick on the parking lot area, just I would look at how it's laid out. Um, and I'm going to take the area that I have in front of this building. Once I get the building laid out, then I can lay out the parking lot in front of it, and I can see it takes up about three-quarters of the length of this building. So there's my scaling on the parking lot right there. Uh, the width is probably three or four times as wide as uh, the building itself. So you've got this here is probably the width of the building, and then this here is probably half to three quarters width and same here so you got almost three building widths in front of it just for the parking area and the reception area again there's your scaling as far as your lines and how many cars don't worry about it when you get in there you can move everything around and figure out how that goes um, do you want to curve curved roads on the end you know that's all details that you can fit in once you get inside the build right now we're just trying to figure out uh, scaling, sizes, how I go about looking at a build. I, guys, I spend hours doing this when I get ready to do a build because I want things. I don't live there, um, even you know, even if it's a, a a building nearby. It's not something I visit every day. I have a partly photographic memory, but it's not that damn good where I can pull all the detail right out of my head and start building it block for block, detail for detail can't do that and the majority of you can't either so the best thing to do is like I said is get a lot of pictures get a lot of information this is the very boring part this is the sucky part of Minecraft right here but the more work that you put in right now into this part the better your builds are going to be because you're going to have the absolute most detail that you can put into that surrounding area instead of just having a slab of uh, you know blocks down with a plane on it and a square looking think it looks like an airport type terminal thing um, yeah so anyways this is how I go about it I've already spent months uh, you know kind of laboring over the Guam area picking out things that I want there's obviously some recreational areas of the track here I saw some soccer fields I saw some basketball courts you know things like that there's obviously going to be some things for the military people to do it's Guam there's not going to be a whole hell of a lot there and that's where the story is going to end as far as where I go now I may jump over to Tinker Air Force Base or another Air Force Base somewhere around the world obviously you know US related because that's where I'm from and that's what I want to build um, so I will jump to some other Air Force bases not for the layouts because I already have that. I already have the length, I already have the width, I already have you know some of the structures that I need. Now I want to go and see if I can find some better pictures of some more popular bases um, that are more local 
uh, to the United States that somebody has got some really nice high-res pictures. Uh, so I can see different building styles for the different buildings, the, uh, the barracks, the cafeterias, the PXs, um, you know, things of that nature. Uh, the control tower will definitely come from Guam because it's, it's, it's recognizable. You look at it and say, ah, that's the control tower from Guam. Uh, so things like that you want to keep specific to your build if that's what you want to do or if you're just generalizing things, then just go get a bunch of Air Force base pictures and build your own base. So that's this is where uh, a, a lot of your uh, results will come from is how much time you're going to spend uh, over Google Maps uh, and in Google Images. There is a lot of information out there. There is no reason why you can't get the sizes that you need. There's the Wikipedia, all that good stuff. There's all kinds of tools at your disposal to start laying out an Air Force base, uh, a military airfield. And, uh, and that's as far as that goes. Spend a lot of time. When you're done with that, jump into Minecraft and start laying it out. So the next program that we're probably going to be jumping into in Episode 2 will be MC Edit. Um, again, how I lay it out. And I will relate that to how you'll do it in game too. Like I said, it just makes it easier to kind of keep this series flowing uh, because I have these tools at my disposal. Otherwise, it will take four or five episodes just to lay the damn base out and show you what I'm doing. And then hopefully by episode three, we'll actually start kind of doing a let's build. I'm in there and I'm going to start laying out these parking lots, these buildings, and start building them up and, uh, and really digging into it. But can't start a build without going through this first. Um, I don't want to just jump in there and try to say, well, just go on you know, Google Maps or Google Images and do this and do that. I'm showing you how to do it right here, step by step, how to build your own airfield. Um, and that's it. Uh, that's episode one, guys. I hope you give me a lot of support throughout this series. Uh, I will be taking comments and uh, uh, questions, things that you want to ask throughout this series and down in the comment section leave me questions they can be random questions Jag what's your favorite football team gives me things to talk about once I get in game and I actually start building um, and I start laying out some rows and things like that where it gets kinda of boring and I'm just punching out blocks and I get to a stagnant point where uh, the commentary just kinda of dies off I can pop up your question I can shout your name out I can put it up on the screen uh, some kind of format like that and say you know so and so asked this question and then I can ramble on about that for a little bit while I build some of the boring stuff which should help keep the uh, uh, the episodes flowing this will probably be the longest one uh, each episode will run between 15 and 20 minutes that way I don't really kill your attention span and you can get the most out of it um, and we can actually get some uh, some building done so that is it big series guys make sure you participate make sure you share it uh, over on Facebook Google Twitter uh, click that like button uh, like button for me always interact with the video by clicking that like button for me and commenting uh, it really helps my channel grow and I really really appreciate it and it super keeps me motivated uh, keeping this series going so that is it guys like always I appreciate you watching remember to rate comment subscribe follow me on Twitter and I'll catch you guys on the next one later